Hi, it's Tim G5TM. Thanks for coming back for another one. And if you're new to the channel, then think about clicking that subscribe button or the notification bell for any future videos. Now, um, I've come across, or I've come across really over the last uh, few years of getting into the hobby, a few, shall we say, myths and legends regarding coax in terms of what coax to use and what bands to use the coax on. So there's three main sort of uh, statements or myths, if you like, to do with coax that uh, I've investigated into because I've heard these very often from people on things like social media and forums, on the air even, and even in person. I just wanted to address these and look at each one of the three in turn. Now, in order to check these myths and legends, if you like, I've been using a coax loss calculator very kindly put up by KV5R. And uh, this allows us to look at different types of coax, different uh, lengths of coax, of course, and gives us an idea based on the SWR we believe to be at the fee point of the typical loss we should expect from these different types of uh, coax. Now, the first of these is uh, often mentioned that you can't use RG58 on two meters, two meters VHF, 144, 145 megahertz, right? So RG58 is seen as lossy up on VHF. In fact, there's many people who think RG58 shouldn't be used on HF, on anything really above, say, maybe 7 or 10 megahertz. Now, let's be honest, there are um, less lossy coax cables out there, but RG58, is it really that bad up on 2 metres? But as you can see, if you compare, looking at the table there, if you compare the top row, the Situation Mobile, using four metres of coax, the figures we've got there for RG58, RG8X, RG213 and LMR400 are based on the actual loss, the attenuation uh, in dB, based on that four metre run of coax. So for RG58, we're losing about 0.7 of a dB. And even if we swapped out and somehow managed to jam in LMR 400 instead of the RG58, we're only half a dB better. So basically, in terms of mobile operation, there's not much difference. And in fact, if we then look at the portable aspect of it as well, so we're up a hill, we've got a, a short, co a short antenna on a, on a fiberglass pole, Say the fiberglass pole is about a five or six metre fiberglass pole. The base of the antenna is four metres above the ground. Let's say we're using about seven metres of coax then to operate in a, port in a portable situation. And again, if we look at that middle column now for portable, RG58 with seven metre run of coax with a 1.5 SWR at the feed point, we're losing just over a dB, 1.2 dB. Even if we swapped that for, say, RG213 on the third column along, we are only just about half a dB better off. So again, even with, say, a 7-metre run of coax, a 20, 25-foot run of coax, if you like, we're not even a dB better if we took up some RG213 with us. So that's why you see a lot of these guys up on SOTA running 2 metres, quite happily using RG58, because at the end of the day, they know the difference is pretty negligible in that short run of coax still between using RG58 and using RG213. The final one to look at then is the bottom column, uh, the home scenario. Let's say we're running 10 meters of coax, we might even run a bit more than that, but 10 meters of coax is about 33 feet or something like that. Now, now we have a bit of a, a bit of loss coming in. So RG58, we're losing 3.4 dB. If we swap that over for RG213, look, you see that shaded in, we're losing 1.8 dB and losing a dB on LMR400. So clearly for the home setup there, we are better off using the thicker coax. It seems to me that for runs up to seven or eight metres, 20, 25 feet, and to be perfectly honest with you, whilst we're losing about a dB, the real world difference is going to be pretty negligible between using RG58 and using something like RG213 or even LMR400. Now, the second myth of the three I want to look at is often trotted out in forums to do with 11 metres and CB. It's that uh, people say they're using RG58 and they're looking for better coax. By better coax, they probably mean coax, which, is, which they believe might maybe lower the noise floor, provide better shielding, or just better performance, of course. They might have maybe a 50 or a 60-foot run of the stuff, or a 30-foot run of the stuff, and they want to try and, that's 10 or 15, 20 metres, and they want to try and reduce the loss and get better performance, fair enough. So a lot of people come back and say, well, 
don't worry about that. I use some RG8X and that makes a quite a big difference, I think, to the performance of my station. Well, does it really? Is it worth trading up from RG58 to RG8X? So let's look at it from the point of view, say, of 10 metres. Now, 10 metres is actually a slightly higher frequency than 27 megahertz. So actually, if we're going to make, uh, make this choice of using 10 metres, we're actually making it harder for the RG58 to shine against RG8X because it's a slightly higher frequency. Let's look at this from the point of view then that we are using 28.5 megahertz as our center frequency. We're using a 15 meter run of coax, that's about 50 feet. And once again, we're choosing, or oh, just surmising, we have a 1.5 to 1 SWR at the feed point. Here we are. Here's exactly in that situation what the difference is. We have an attenuation of 1.1 dB with RG58 and 0.8 GB dB even on RG8X. So the final scenario is, or the final myth is, a lot of people say, don't use RG174, all right? Now, RG174, for those who don't know, is the really thin, skinny stuff, the really thin coax, okay? Often you find people using them up on SOTA summits because it's so lightweight. It tends to come mostly attached with a BNC connector, and it's usually one of those uh, lens of coax that you use because people use it purely because of the lack of weight. So you can use it maybe to feed a dipole near the top of a fiberglass pole because the weight factor is less and there's far less chance, or less chance anyway, of your fiberglass pole collapsing on itself, for example, and damaging the pole and obviously stopping you from being able to, to activate wherever you want to go portable. Um, so RG174 is useful from that point of view, but a lot of people look at how thin the coax is and make the assumption that it's just not uh, a usable coax at all, even at the higher frequencies. So let's say then we're going portable and we've got a five, seven meter fiberglass pole. We can't use the top because it's too thin and whippy. So we're going to mount a dipole, say five or six meters up the pole. So, um, we're going to use an 8 meter run of RG174, inverted V dipole, and again we're assuming we've got a 1.5 to 1 SWR at the feed point. So, are we right not to use RG174 to feed a dipole? Well, let's see. We've got four different frequencies there. We've got 7, 14, 21, and 28 megahertz. Now, on 7 megahertz, as you can see, with our 8 meter run of RG174, even compared with RG213, which is, I mean, not very chunky and uh, quite heavy coax, really. But we're only losing half a dB. And we're hardly anything above RG58. On 20 metres, yeah, there's a slight difference. I think we're now 0 0.6 dB worse off than RG213. On 15 metres, we're 0 0.7 uh, dB worse off than RG213. Even up on 10 metres, the, uh, the difference between... Um, 10, uh, 10 meters using RG174, 8 meters of RG174 up on 10 meters, and using that 8 meter run of RG213 is still barely a dB of difference. So I do hope that that has given you some food for thought. Uh, if you've got any opposing views, alternative scenarios, things you want to clarify, things you agree or disagree with, pop them in the comments below. Just keep them nice. And uh, I'd be happy to discuss anything with you. At the end of the day, this hobby, like so much or so many hobbies, a lot of it's about opinion. However, I think this particular discussion hinges on the fact of whether or not we think a dB of attenuation is a big deal. If you think it's a big deal and worth fighting for, you may disagree with what I'm saying. If, like me, you think it's something most of us can probably put up with, then... Maybe some of these, if I call them that, myths about coax can be repudiated to a fair degree. Well, thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, then click subscribe. And there'll be another video coming up very shortly as well over here for you to click on. Take care until the next time and um, enjoy the bands and they really begin to open up, especially higher HF. Get out there and enjoy yourself. All the best. Bye bye now.